Okay, so what do we have here? A bunch of magnets. North, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. And a uh, little seal dude on his neck on the track. Covering approximately 16 inches. Well, actually 15 because we're off the end over here an inch. So, we're going to take a normal steel ball. It's not attracted to metal. This is a metal surface. So it's shunting the fields. That concentrates the energy up on the top of the track. Aluminum track, non-magnetic. We're going to drop this in at about half an inch away from the first magnet set. And I don't know what that force and pull is, but it, it, it pulls it a certain amount. So the object here is to to demonstrate that the original pull of the magnet, if we pull this one back out of the out of the sequence, you notice the ball never does make it past that first magnet. So you have a, a certain amount of pull and that that momentum from the very dead stop to this point, that's the work that's being performed here. We've got motion, we've got force, we've got distance, so there's work being performed here by a permanent magnet on a steel ball. Now the problem is we want to propagate this ball all the way down the track. So what this is going to illustrate is that by bringing another field approximately 45 degrees off the center line of each magnet we're going to see that we can propagate that initial momentum and keep that initial momentum going throughout the sequence of events here. And it will continue to do so until it actually gets overcome by the rest restriction of air and the friction of the track. And So as it passes each magnet it's actually losing energy into the system. But the interesting point is, is whatever our first momentum draw is, from a standstill to that first magnet, that energy can be maintained theoretically for a long distance. And so there's more work being performed in that process. And this will actually go uphill to a certain extent, uh, depending on the strength of your magnets. You can raise that ramp you can get a certain amount of work. It doesn't go quite as far because now we're adding more restriction to it, but we've got to, we, we were able to get past the first magnet. So you can see that you know the increase in elevation has an effect on the on the quantity of strength that you have available to you. Stronger magnets obviously would make a difference. Additionally, if each successive stage was a stronger magnet, let's say you started off with an N20 down here and progressed all the way up to an N50 out here at the end, each progressive stage would actually accelerate and add energy to the momentum of your device. So it's also possible to use that to get further down the track. You could also take a ramp with some very strong magnets and acceleration. You could build yourself a hill, you know, come up, go over the top, magnets the whole way over the top and down the other side, and you can reduce the strength of the magnets down the back side of the hill and let gravity take over for that momentum factor. And you could put several of these hills in succession and actually propagate something like this quite a distance. So this, this video is to illustrate that permanent magnets on an object can produce force over and beyond the energy that's required to set it here on the track. So we do have a situation here that certainly bears experimentation and further development. That's it.